Okay, so welcome to the Ultimate Sun and Moon Pokemon Building Guide that will make chaining for high IV Pokemon in Shinies 1,000 times easier, but still just as mind-numbing as normal. If you don't know what chaining Pokemon in Sun and Moon is, then here's a quick breakdown. You go into a battle with a Pokemon, and after each turn the opposing Pokemon has a chance to call an SOS Pokemon in a battle with it. The odds of this increase as the opponent Pokemon loses health and if an Adrenaline Orb is used. Pokemon with status effects cannot call an SOS as well, but as you call in more Pokemon into battle, the chances of them having higher IVs, hidden abilities, and being shiny increase. Here's a chart. Here's an example of what we want to go for in the Smeargle build. Stick around for an explanation of why and how to do all this. First you want to go to Route 2, encounter Smeargle and use False Swipe on it before Smeargle can use Sketch. This will ensure that this Smeargle, who we will now refer to as Alpha, has False Swipe. Catch Alpha and this is your new chaining Pokemon. False Swipe is to get the Pokemon you are chaining down to as little health as possible, which will increase the odds of an SOS being called. Level up Alpha until it learns Sketch again, then the next move it needs to know is a recovery move. There are plenty to choose from, here's a list, but you want to go with one that's easily accessible to you, or is your preference. Note that for chaining things in the rain, moves like Synthesis and Morning Sun won't be as effective. To get the healing move on Alpha, encounter another smear goal on Route 2, outspeed it and use the healing move. Then switch into Alpha and have Alpha sketch the healing move that the Wild Smeargle used. The healing move is to make sure that you don't spend a billion dollars on health items trying to keep your chain alive. After Alpha has a healing move, then level it up until it has sketch again. The next move you'll need is Recycle. An easy way to get this is on the event Munchlax, or if you don't have that, you can get it from a Porygon gifted to you in the Aether House. Use the same method as before to put Recycle on Alpha. The reason Recycle is so important is so you don't ever run out of power points on your Alpha. When you give your Alpha a Lepivary, it will consume it once one of your moves runs out of power points. Use Recycle after that, then you'll have your Lepivary back. Well, what happens when Recycle runs out of power points? Well, as long as you have the Lepivary on Alpha when Recycle runs out, it'll use it to bring Recycle up to 10 power points again. Then you can use Recycle again to get the Lepivary back. And don't worry if your other moves hit 0 power points, because as long as you use Recycle, then you'll bring the Lepivary back and then it'll bring the other move back up to 10. The last move that you want is really up to your preference. If your Alpha has a Technician, you might want to consider moves that have high power points that are lower than 60 base attacks. Some options include Icicle Spear, Ice Shard, or whatever suits the situation. This move is basically to sweep the SOS Pokemon that you don't need. So let's go through an example. I encounter a Fero, and I want to keep chaining until I get a cast for him. I have my Alpha with False Swipe, Recover, Recycle, Icicle Spear, and equipped with a Lepa Berry. Ideally, your Alpha should be many levels higher than the Pokemon you are training just for convenience. Alpha uses False Swipe on Fero and brings it down to 1 HP. Fero attacks. I use an Adrenaline Orb, Fero attacks again. Fero spawns in another Fero, Alpha uses Icicle Spear on the new one, and faints it. Old Fero calls in another. It is important to note that to keep the chain going, you must keep a Pokemon from the family in the chain. So in this situation, I want to keep at least one Fero on the battlefield at all times. Also, it's important to faint the original one that you started with every once in a while, or whichever one you're keeping around, because if it starts to struggle, then it'll kill itself and then that will end the chain. If I keep repeating this, then I can get an endless chain going until I finally get the result that I want. So in summary, this is what you want for your chaining Pokemon. These are the probabilities of outcome when chaining. Make sure to start on a new Pokemon every once in a while so it doesn't faint itself. And pay the fuck attention so you don't accidentally end the chain, because that feels terrible. Also, getting a shiny charm doubles the odds of finding a shiny, so maybe consider getting that before chaining for shinies, which can be obtained by completing the Pokedex. I've had a lot of friends who wanted me to make this video, so be sure to show it to your friends, I guess. I'll be making an ultimate catching Pokemon guide soon, so uh, keep an eye out for that one. Spoiler alert, it's not a miracle. So yeah, good luck, because you'll fucking need it. Until next time, peace.